In this video, we're going to look at a technique that can be used to solve inequalities with polynomial, quadratic, or rational expressions. So here's an example of what I'm talking about. I have this rational expression, and I'm going to leave it here in factored form x plus 2 times x minus 1 all over x minus 3 is greater than 0. We'd like to find the solution set. Now the solution set is going to consist of possibly more than one interval. And so how can we find that? Um, so first of all, consistently we're going to have 0 on one side of our inequalities. If it's not there, then we're going to have to make it zero and then do something to the other side of the equation. Because that way, if it's greater than zero, it would be positive. If it were less than zero, it would be negative. So this expression has three factors connected by multiplication and division. And how can you get three numbers 2 multiply together and then divided by a third to be a positive number? Well, they could all be positive. So all factors could be positive. Or you could have two of the factors be negative and the other one being positive. Because either you have a negative divided by a negative, which makes a positive, or a negative times a negative, which would be a positive. So really, there's four cases to consider here. I could have a positive times a positive divided by a positive. The two top factors could be positive. I mean, sorry, negative, and the bottom one is positive. Or I could have one of the factors be negative in the top and the bottom be negative. Now, you could actually find a solution by going through all of these four cases. That's a lot of work. And in fact, some of these cases might not even be possible. And so, you know, which one of these is going to give us a set of x values which would be a solution? Meaning that those intervals, x in those intervals, would make a true statement when you substitute it into the inequality. Well, we're going to develop a systematic way to determine which of these makes sense, and indeed, which intervals are the solution set. So let's look at these factors, right? x plus 2. x plus 2 is positive when x is greater than negative 2. It's negative when x is less than negative 2. And the second factor, x minus 1, that's positive when x is greater than 1, and negative when x is less than 1. And the factor in the denominator is positive when x is greater than 3, and then it's negative when x is less than 3. So these numbers are very important, negative 2, 1, and 3. And in fact, we call them critical values, and we'll just abbreviate that as CVs. They're critical values because the factors change sign. They change from being negative to positive or positive to negative. And that's important because remember, what we're looking for is a combination which will result in a positive value because that will satisfy the inequality greater than 0. So the critical values are going to be the endpoints of the possible intervals which could form the or which could possibly form part of the solution. And how can we determine which of those intervals? So this is pretty good. I mean we're we're going to have three x values. That's going to divide up the real line into four intervals. Which of those four are in the solution set. So we start by just getting a picture. Let's put them on the number line. 
So there's one at 3, one at 1, and negative 2. Now I use different colors here because the one at 3 is in the denominator. So one thing I should know is that 3 is not in the domain. Right? I can never consider 3 as part of my solution. And then I'm going to get these four intervals. I'll get the interval, so let me put a little color on here. I'm going to get the interval which is to the left of negative 2. Everything to the left of negative 2. That's negative infinity to negative 2. That goes everything up to the first critical value. And then I go from that critical value to the next critical value. So I'll go from negative 2 to, negative, to positive 1. That's my second interval, which could be this part of the solution set. And then I've got another interval from that critical value up to 3. So from 1 to 3. And then finally, everything to the right of 3 meaning 3 comma infinity, that would be my fourth interval. So my solution set consists of one or more of those intervals. Now, again, how do I determine which intervals? Well, what I'm going to do is in each interval, I'm going to choose a value in that interval, not on the boundary, none of the critical values can be test values. So I'll choose a test value from each interval. And then I'm going to look at the factored form. I'm not going to actually find the numbers by putting in the test value. I just need to know if each factor results in a positive number or a negative number. And then that combination will tell me, well, does that result in a negative or a positive. If it results in a positive, then yes, it's in the solution set. If it results in a, a negative, it's not. So I've chosen some test values. You want to have something to the left of negative 2. It's always good to choose whole numbers. Sometimes you have no choice but to choose a fraction or decimal. But here we can choose whole numbers. We like to choose the smallest ones that we can. And then uh, whenever we can choose zero, it's our favorite test value. All right, so now let's look at what the signs will be. If I put negative 3 into x plus 2, that will result in a negative number. If I put negative 3 in x minus 1, that will also be a negative number. And if I put negative 3 into the uh, x minus 3, that'll be a negative number. And so I have negative times negative divided by negative. That's going to result in a negative. That is not what would I want. I want positive. So the answer is no. That is not in the solution set. All right. Well, let's look at 0. If I put 0 in the first factor, I'll get a plus. If I put 0 in the x minus 1, I'll get a negative. And if I put 0 in x minus 3, I'll get a negative. So negative over negative is a positive. Times positive is positive. So we have a winner. Yes, this is part of the solution set. All right, what about 2? 2 plus 2, that's a positive number. 2 minus 1, that's a positive number. But 2 minus 3 would be a negative number. So I have positive divided by negative, which will be negative. And so that's not part of the solution set. And then finally, when I put 4 in, I'll have a positive number in all three factors. 
So positive times positive divided by positive, of course, that's going to be a positive. So as you see, I have two intervals, negative 2 comma 1 and 3 comma infinity, which form the solution set. How do I join them together? We use the set notation. We use the union. We would say the solution set is negative 2 comma 1 union. So this symbol that looks like a U, 3 comma infinity. So, what is our process? There's seven steps to it. We have to have one side zero, right? One side of the inequality has to be zero. Now, if we have a rational expression, there may be more than one fraction, or there may be a fraction with a whole number. We'll have to write that as a single fraction. And once we've done that, then we can factor completely. From the factors, we can determine the critical values and the test intervals. So we'll make a table, just like we used. We'll choose test values from each of the test intervals. And we'll substitute then, or determine the sign, whether it's negative or positive, uh, of the factors at each test value. And then based on that, we'll know if it belongs to the solution set or not. And then we can finally write out the solution set. If it consists of one interval, we just write down the one interval. If it has more than one, we join them together with the union sign. So here's an example. It's already uh, has zero on one side. Uh, it is just a quadratic, which I can factor. So that's our step. And then from the factors, I can see that our critical values are positive 8 and negative 2. So on the number line, I can see that I'm going to get three intervals. I'm going to get an interval from negative 8 to negative 2, from negative 2 to 8, and 8 to infinity. Now notice one thing. Notice that I am using the brackets, the square brackets. And why is that? Because it says less than or equal to. Now here it says less than 0, which means that it'll be in the solution set if our result is negative. So let's see if we can do this live. I need a test value. And less than negative 2, I'll choose negative 3. A test value between negative 2 and 8, I'll choose 0. That's our favorite one. And a test value which is bigger than 8, I'll choose 9. So now, let's put these test values into our factors and see what the sign will be. So if I have... Uh, negative 3 in the first factor, I'll get a negative value. And if I put negative 3 in the second factor, I will get another negative value. And that's going to make a positive. Is that in the solution set? Well, no, because here I want a negative. So no. All right, let's put 0 in. 0 in the first factor will give me a negative. 0 in the second factor will give me a positive. The product of a negative and a positive will make a negative number. And so that's what I want. So yes, that is in the solution set. And then let's do 9. Uh, I'll get a positive number in the first factor and a positive number in the second factor. That product is positive, and that's not what I want for this particular problem. So the solution set only has one interval, and that is negative 2 comma 8, with brackets because the equals to part. Let's look at another example. Again, it's a, a quadratic. 
which I can factor. I'm going to get 2 plus x times 2 minus x. It's the difference of 2 squares. And from that, I can see that the critical values are negative 2 and positive 2. So again, I should get three intervals, everything to the left of negative 2, everything between negative 2 and positive 2, and then everything to the right. So I'm just putting dots here. Uh, maybe it would be useful if, because I have the strictly less than, there is no um, equals to part. Maybe I should have made them open to emphasize that. But when I write down the intervals, I'm going to use parentheses because I know that they do not form part of the solution sequence. I don't have the equals to part. So to the left of negative 2, that means negative infinity to negative 2. And I can use a test value of negative 3. Uh, between negative 2 and 2, I'll use a test value of 0. And to the right of 2, I'll use a test value of positive 3. So when I put negative 3 in 2 plus x, I'll get a negative. And when I put a negative 3 in 2 minus x, I'll get a positive. And that is going to be negative as a result. And negative is what I want. Less than 0 is negative. So yes. And then if I put in 0, I'm going to get a, a positive in each factor which will make a positive. And that's not what I want, so we'll say no, not in the solution set. And then when I put in positive 3, I'll get a positive in the first factor. And then a positive, no, not a positive. I'll get a negative in the second factor. And that product will be negative, and that's what I want. So now I have two intervals, and so my solution set would be the interval negative infinity to negative 2 union to, to infinity. All right, so here I have a polynomial. It's not, it's higher than quadratic, it's a cubic, but I can still factor it. I have to make one side equal to zero, so let's start by doing that. I'll subtract 2x squared from each side. Then I'll go ahead and factor out the common factor of x squared. And so once I've completed the factorization, I can see that my two critical values are x equals 0 and x equals 2. So let's go ahead and look at that on the number line and set up our table. So to the left of 0, that's negative infinity to the 0. Then between 0 and 2, that's 0 comma 2. And then to the right of 2, that's 2 to infinity. And so uh, there is no equals to part, so there's just using parentheses. So a test value between or less than 0, I'll just choose a negative 1. A test value between 0 and 2, we can go ahead and use 1. Can't use 0 this time. And then between 2 and infinity, I'll use 3. Now notice this. One factor is x squared. So no matter what uh, test value you use, it's going to give you a positive. So I know that I'm always going to get a positive from the first factor. And then I just have to look at what happens when I put negative 1 into x minus 2. That will give me a negative number. And so the result will be negative. And that's not what I want. In this case, I want positive. So no, 
not in the solution set. So let's put in a, a 1. Of course, the first factor is always going to be positive. And then if I put in 1, 1 minus 2 is going to be a negative. So I get a result of negative. So nope. That is also not in the solution set. If I put 3, again, I get a positive. But then 3 minus 2, that will also be a positive, making a positive, which is what we want. So the answer is yes, this is in the solution set. In fact, it's the only interval in the solution set. So the solution set is the interval from 2 to infinity. All right. I know this video is getting a little long, so hang in there. This is an important example. If you want to take a break, this would be a good time to pause and come back and watch this last example. Now, this last example is our most complicated example. It has a rational expression. It's not equal to zero, so I'm going to start by subtracting 4 from each side. I'm going to do all my algebra over here to save some space. And then I need to write this as a single fraction. So I'm going to go ahead and get a common denominator. I'll multiply the negative 4. I can think of that as negative 4 over 1. I'll multiply top and bottom by x minus 1. And then I'll remove the parentheses to get the expression x squared minus 4x plus 4 in the numerator. <coughs> Now that can factor, and in fact, it's the square of a binomial. It's the binomial x minus 2 squared. So once I have it in the factored form, the other side is 0, then I can identify the critical values. Uh, the critical values would be uh, 1 and 2. And so on my number line, I, I use every line now as a half because I'm going to have to choose a fraction now, a number between 1 and 2. So I'm going to choose 1.5 or 3 halves. So again, I only have three intervals. I'm going from negative infinity to 1, between 1 and 2, and 2 to infinity. Now. I have the equals to part, so with the 2, I'm using a bracket. But why did I use the parentheses with the 1? Well, that has to do with the fact that 1 is a critical value that makes the denominator 0. So it doesn't matter what kind of inequality I have. None of my solutions can include 1. 1 is not part of the domain. So Whenever I have a critical value which comes from making a 0 in the denominator, I will always, always, always have a parentheses on that interval. All right, so let's go ahead and choose some test values. I'll choose uh, 0. That's between negative infinity and 1. Between 1 and 2, I guess I'll have to choose 1.5 or 3 halves. And then between 2 and infinity, I'll take 3. All right. Now, this is really not that hard because, again, the top is a perfect square. Something squared. Any number squared is going to give you a positive number. So I know the top is always going to be positive, And then I just need to look at what the bottom would be. Well, if I put 0 in, that will make a negative. The result is a negative. And is that what I want? Well, yes. Less than or equal to 0 means negative. So yes, that is in the solution set. In the solution set. All right. So putting in 1.5, the top is always positive because it's squared. In the bottom, 1.5 minus 1, that will be a positive number. So positive over positive is positive. 
And the answer is that in the solution set, no. And then what about three? Again, the top is positive. Three minus one is also positive. Result is a positive number. And so no, that's not in the solution set. The solution set then has only one interval and that is negative infinity comma one.